This is a ballistic helmet made in China. We already tested one ballistic helmet from China and it did terribly. It was made from high density polyethylene and the biggest problem of that was that it was not bonded correctly. So when the bullet hit the material, it delaminated and the back face deformation was probably lethal. This Chinese helmet is made from aramid fibers. It's a similar material than Kevlar and we already tested a high quality European helmet made from aramid fibers and it did amazing. So now I want to see if the Chinese made one can compare. I didn't have time or motivation to do a proper test of this helmet. So these are just first impressions. The helmet looks suspiciously thin and it has some flex to it. It's lightweight and surprisingly high quality made. Ah! After throwing it around, we noticed a couple of things. First one, the plastic is not brittle and will not crack immediately. It can take a lot of beating. The energy mount is loose, but can be adjusted with these three screws. So you just tighten it, it should be okay. But what's surprising is that it's made from aluminum. I saw a lot of helmets, even quality made ones, that just use plastic. The helmet is not painted, but it seems to be covered with some kind of plastic rubberized material that protects it nicely. It's actually very resistant to the damage, but once you cut it, it starts to tear very easily. The padding is soft and comfortable and it is removable, so you can move it around on the Velcro. The shittiest thing about these helmets are the straps. They're really low quality, low effort made. They do work, but it, it just, it, it's not pleasant to wear. And the adjustments are, are really bad. This video was sponsored by Salaire and Below. They make great ammo. Looking at the helmet, the back face deformation is minimal. This is actually a very positive surprise because the last Chinese helmet that we tested had such a big back face deformation, even from a 9mm, that I, I would not wear it. These are three 9mm rounds, very close together, and the back, back face deformation is barely noticeable, and the bulge is smaller than the thickness of this pad. That means that it would probably not even hurt your head. Even the most powerful round that we shot today, the 7.62 by 25, barely did any damage. 22 long rifle barely made a dent. It was interesting to see that it hit the helmet at a slight angle and actually moved under the Kevlar to this position over here. And you can see the double bulge on the inside. It's minimal, barely noticeable. The next hit was from the VZ61, the Scorpion, from a 32 ACP. And the hit was almost on the edge of the helmet. You can see the delamination over here, but it still managed to stop the bullet. This is a double extra large t-shirt that I took today from the store because nobody bought it and now the cameraman tells me that I look kind of fat. Damn it guys, go to polarotactical.com slash shop, buy our t-shirt so I don't have to. <laughs> the first 9mm full metal jacket hit at an angle and actually traveled under the Kevlar to this position over here so it was not a direct straight hit. So I adjusted the helmet and did another one over here. It was a bit too close to the first hit, in my opinion. But when we look at the back face deformation, it doesn't really matter. The helmet caught it without any problems. And this one is the XRG round with only 100 grains, but the bullet travels very fast and it's a solid projectile. The XRG seems to make a bigger dent on the inside. We finished off with a shot from the Yugoslavian TT pistol because it's chambered in 7.62 Tokaro. It's a very powerful round. It's actually not included in an NIJ level 3A rating. Now the problem here is that this Chinese helmet performed so good that we came unprepared. If you see the back face deformation from the 7.62 Tokaro, it's minimal. I think this helmet could easily withstand higher threats, but I left my Desert Eagle at home. Cut.